ये सिर्फ हड़ताल की तस्वीर नहीं है इस हड़ताल से हैदराबाद के गांधी अस्पताल की कई कहानियां खुलने लगती Hello guys, I'm Anas Zafar, second year medical student. Welcome to my channel. On 10th June in Gandhi Hospital, when a 55-year-old hypertensive patient died due to COVID-19, his sons threw a stool at the doctor in anger, following which junior doctors took to streets to protest against the lack of workplace safety among many other problems they were having. The issue of increased workload on a single hospital and the lack of proper PPEs are the problems introduced by the pandemic. But violence on doctors is not new to Gandhi Hospital or Telangana state or for that matter the entire country. If you are a medical student like me, there are high chances that you might have to face a similar situation when you practice. Because according to the Indian Medical Association, 75% doctors experience violence at workplace happen either with them or their colleagues. And this is going to continue in the future unaffected by the introduction of harsh laws if you do not address the core of the problem that is a strained doctor-patient relationship in our country. The problem is multifactorial but the goal has always been to have a better doctor-patient relationship. An ideal relationship is where the doctor is empathetic, the patient is compliant and they both trust each other. What I meant by multifactorial is that the relationship not just depends on doctors and patients, it also depends on the setting or the environment in which they meet and the preconceived opinions they have. This is where the role of government, the hospital and the media comes in. We all have a role to play in this, so let's see what we can do. As patients and relatives, first thing is be aware, read about your condition, chances of survival, find out about different treatment options and the best doctor for your condition, so that you can trust him. Now this is important because you'll listen to your doctor and you'll be satisfied only if you trust him. As a patient, you should understand that both you and your doctor have the same goals and your health and well-being is in the best interest of both. Keeping this in mind, it becomes your duty to honestly answer all the questions he asks, let him perform necessary examinations and follow his instructions. You should also understand that most doctors you meet in a government hospital are overworked. The central government directive is that junior doctors should not work more than 48 hours per week but this is not followed anywhere and they are made to work more than 80 hours per week. Don't mistake the lack of infrastructure in government hospitals as negligence by doctors. Lack of ICU beds or insufficient number of ventilators or long queue outside of patient is not doctor's fault. See there is no doubt that there are unethical and corrupt medical practitioners but you cannot paint an entire profession with the same color. Corruption is a malice that affects every profession the media and even the judiciary is no exception to this. If a patient is not satisfied with something, he should take the matter to higher authorities like the senior doctor or the grievance redressal department or the law. Violence is not an answer and it is going to only get you into more trouble and affect the mental health of doctors in that hospital. In the olden times before urbanization took over, there used to be one doctor and his assistant responsible for the health of a small village. They were an integrated part of the local community and people trusted them with their lives. But now there is a wide gap between the educated class and the labor class of India and hence the increasing intellectual class of doctors became alienated from the grassroots society. Understanding and being integrated with the community is an essential part of practicing clinical medicine. Healthcare profession requires empathy like a pile of bricks requires cement to join every component and bring it to meaningful existence. <laughs> That's just an analogy that I came up with. But from what I have experienced, empathy is the least sought after thing in med school. No one teaches you that. When someone joins medical college as a freshman, he experiences things that can be described as complete opposite to empathy. And when at the foundation of his career, his first lesson is that you can expect him to carry it for a long time. Dr. Porush writes in his article in Indian Heart Journal, 
As a doctor trained in India, I can say that Indian medical schools are excellent in imparting medical training to the students. However, teaching to be empathetic toward the patient is seriously lacking. He further writes proper and effective communication with the patients and attendants is an art and should be taught to all young doctors. William Oslo famously said, "The good physician treats the disease, but the great physician treats the patient who has the disease." Doctors in India see their patients for less than 2 minutes on average. Compare this with 20 minutes in the US. This is one of the prime reasons for patient dissatisfaction. Most patients just want their doctors to hear them completely. Should involve patients more in their treatment decisions. Studies have shown that patient participation causes increased health outcomes and delivery of more appropriate and cost-effective services. Prescribing unnecessary tests and needless invasive procedures should be avoided. as it causes increase in patient distrust towards medical community this mostly happens in private hospitals hospitals can do a lot in improving and strengthening the doctor patient relationship and preventing violence hospitals need and especially government hospitals need serious reforms government hospitals should focus on employment of adequate number of doctors and take other necessary steps to ease the rush of patients and decrease long waiting hours so that doctors can spend more time with their patients and also there should be better hygiene in hospital premises a very important and necessary step to improve patient satisfaction is to have a transparent billing system and also a grievance redressal department it's a department where you can go and complain also there should be a sound security system in place and there should be cctv cameras wherever necessary The number of relatives entering the hospital or a doctor's office should be restricted. There should be proper screening to ensure no armed person enters the premises. A standard operating procedure can be developed for such situations like code purple, which is used worldwide to alert medical staff to potential violence. There's a lack of doctors in our country and the population is ever increasing. We need more medical colleges, we need more hospitals, we need more MBBS and PG seats. If the number of doctors do not increase in proportion with the population public health care will obviously be overburdened and overload of patients in itself creates so many problems government of india needs to spend more on health care we spend less than 2% of our gdp on health care this is less than even our neighbors if you compare with the developed countries they spend 6 to 8% of their gdp is on health care it is near impossible to build hospitals for 1.3 billion patients but it is quite possible to build hospitals for 1.3 billion citizens who are largely healthy nutrition immunization giving access to clean water pollution control teaching personal hygiene promoting sports and other forms of physical activities are basic requirements for that the government should spend a lot more resources and concentrate its activities on preventive medicine the media has an important role to play in educating masses Instead of running useless TV debates, if you run programs where you teach people healthy eating habits, daily exercise routine, show them their rights and responsibilities as patients and make them aware of various health related government schemes and how to benefit from those schemes, it will not give you a lot of TRP, but you will be able to sleep peacefully knowing that you have impacted millions of people. Lastly, if we as different parts of society take initiative and follow these measures, then doctors will have a safer workplace and India will have a healthier workforce. If you liked the video, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye until next time.